I'm now cast meteorologist Jim Vaughn. Ladies and gentlemen, you're now tuned into Chat City with P. Ross. Conversations and interviews are in the queue. Listen or join in. Here she is, P. Ross. Greetings, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Chat City with P. Ross once again. I am your host, P. Ross, and I want to say I am back after a long month away. Yes, and it feels good to be back in this chair. My house applause is not working at the moment, so like I said, we're going <laughs> to... All right, all right. Yeah, so we got some interesting topics today, and I just before we get started, I just want to say thank you to our guest, Anita Hayes, who is here with us today and co-host <laughs> Will Quick. How's everybody today? Hey, hey, Hi. yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'd just like to say I am another year older since I've um, been away. I've turned another year older, so I was blessed to see another birthday, 54 yes. years old, and Yay. I am totally grateful for uh, being able to experience that. So, uh, thank you, Lord, once again. I'm Amen. saying that publicly. Okay. <laughs> and thank you for my birthday wishes, Will, when I came in the door. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Appreciate that. Uh huh. All right. So today we've got, like I said, some great topics. We've got, uh, we're going to be talking about marriage preparations. And we've got a, somebody here that's going <laughs> to, that's able to share. <laughs> That information with us today, Miss Anita Hayes. Oh, I don't know about preparation, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this was All the right. topic. <laughs> it's one of them. Uh, Anita's getting married. She's been here with us on the show before. She, uh, we did a segment with her, Lady Truck Drivers, mm -hmm. and uh, that was a great, great show. And so she's off the road now, and she's preparing for marriage. And we want to hear a little bit about that, Anita. Wow. Well, not right now. <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> she didn't okay. know what our subject was going to be. Know, it was a, okay. a little bit of a surprise to yeah, her today. Yeah, it was, it, it's, it, yeah it, it's a whole nother life now. A whole nother <laughs> life yeah. now. You okay, know, well, we're gonna... it, it, I go from one extreme to the other, don't I, Paul? <laughs> That's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but you know, life is like that, though. You got to go is. with the punches and go with it, you know? So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I am so ecstatic. I am so excited, you know, um... Reginald and I have been so blessed with so many people, including the co-host, Mr. <laughs> Will Quick, and his uh -huh. lovely wife, Shalithia, uh -huh. um, are all going to be joining us in um, Los Cabos uh -huh. Los in Cabos. October. And we've got a lot of guests coming. And I just didn't realize. At first, I thought it was just going to be in our, our uh, Reginald and I and our boys. And there's Chase, Alex, and Randon Lee and we just going to be there and just say, you know, have our little wedding on the beach. Mm -hmm. Well, we kind of open it up. Well, anybody can go. Well, they, you they, know. They open up the floodgates. Yeah, and uh, I mean, everybody, we was like, wow. Any excuse uh -huh. for a vacation. I know work. that's right. Yeah, that's right. So we are really excited. And I think the boys are excited. So it's a new chapter in both our lives and, you know, trying to blend our families. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, as far as preparation is concerned, I'm, I'm now I'm getting kind of, uh, excited and everything is starting to come together and I've had so many people to help me mm -hmm. um, Sharonda Meadows Renee Jackson or Tara Jackson or mm -hmm. Tammy Mills <laughs> um, Wendy Thomas um, Burrow McMillan Winnie Quick Sh um, Shamrika Harrison um, and Shalithia Quick as well um, if I miss anybody gosh oh LaShawn Connor um, Bridget Hardy. So all these ladies have come and they have really, truly supported me from the beginning. They ask, you know, do I need anything? How, how, how am I doing? Mm -hmm. And I'm, and I've never gone through the process. So everything is new and uh -huh. I don't know the protocol etiquette, none of that. So I'm not that person. So, <laughs> That's all right. That's <laughs> so all right. it's good to have my village come and step in. You know what I mean? Yes. Absolutely. So I just can't wait. And it's, it's a, it's actually, it's a great experience because I've never really had all that support. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I didn't know, well, I put it this way. I didn't know I had that support. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes a close, well, closed mouth never gets fed. So, mm -hmm. 
I've always been private. I always try to deal with things on my own and stuff. And and just for these ladies and gentlemen to be able to come out and, you know, and they just support us like that. I just can't ask. And also Wanda Ballou, um, uh-huh. that's going to be my future sister-in-law. So. Okay. And she's been so tremendous. I mean, I gotten sick one time and she came all the way from, um, I don't know if she was in South Boston or Brookneal, but anyway, this is Virginia and uh-huh. I'm in Greensboro. So to make sure I was okay. So I, I'm just, I'm just so, 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 so blessed. And I cannot imagine um, any other way. I'm uh-huh. so glad that these people are coming in part of our lives. Awesome. Awesome. That is great. And it sounds like this is going to be <laughs> one fantastic. Oh, I hope so. I hope it's going to be a trip and, to and, remember. And, and, oh, I hope yeah. in a good way too. <laughs> Another sure subject we're going to get into yeah. is long-lasting friendships. Yes. Will and Anita have been friends for a long time, and I was introduced <laughs> to them by a mutual friend, Sharonda Meadows. A big shout-out to Sharonda. Yay. We want to yeah. house applause her. Yeah, Yay. yeah, yeah. Sharonda, we love you dearly, mm-hmm. and, you know, it's, it's just been good so far, you know, just mm-hmm. meeting her friends and I'm adapting to them. I believe they're adapting to me. And I think this is just going to be wonderful. Oh, yes, yeah. Yes. So we're going to talk about that a little later on as okay. well. Um, when I was here the last time on July 27th, Will was here with me. And one of the subjects we, or one of the things we talked about was a missing person. That was Miss Alicia Watts. Yes. And uh, a young lady, uh, beautiful young lady who, uh, um, has done so much for her community and uh you know uh she was just missing and her friends put boots on the ground everybody came to together as a community as a whole to try to find her she was last seen or her no last known whereabouts was with her boyfriend who was in charlotte north carolina she uh was a resident of foxfire north carolina in moore county um unfortunately and you may have heard already in the news alicia was found unalive Mm. and uh we were glad that she was found but it's sad to find you know to to see that she was found in that condition Mm. um she was found near a cemetery in the woods and uh it was just heartbreaking to hear this news she was funeralized on last sunday september the 3rd at uh in moore county Mm -hmm. and um at sand hills community college and when i say there was a sea of people out there for that young lady i mean it i mean there were hundreds of people i had planned to go to the service although i had met her one time and the more i kept hearing her story the more i knew that well i knew she was connected to a lot of people that i was connected to Mm -hmm. but i learned that oh yeah i do know her dad i did some work for him a, a couple of years ago and i do know her mom you know i started learning these things and it just made me even more sadder so um we wanted to talk about how we how we got to this point with alicia because at this time things have come out um she was a victim of domestic violence and so that's our main topic today domestic violence we want to help as many people as we can to not go through that um, her death will not be in vain. A lot of people have already vowed to use her situation to help others. She is a model for other women and men to come out mm-hmm. of these situations. Okay. So, um, like I said, she was murdered by her. We don't even like to call him boyfriend anymore at this point. Mm-hmm. You know, her, but friend she was, guy. her friend guy. She was murdered by him. 51 year old James Dunmore of Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, when uh, his background was exposed, he has had a long history of domestic violence with other women. Mm -hmm. And it's even speculated, sadly, that there may be even more Mm -hmm. um, people out there. So that has has not been found, I should say. And so we hope that is not the case, Mm -hmm. but in case it is. So my goal today is to couple along with everybody else who... uh, want to say hey what can we do to prevent this Mm -hmm. will in your line of work i know you were um your your uh former law law enforcement officer i pretty i'm pretty sure you've seen a lot of this unfortunately more than i care to remember but it's uh each situation as many as it has been it doesn't take long to think back and remember the dynamics of it the kids and the impact that it had on them Mm -hmm. uh trying to reach out to both parties and encourage them to change behavior because it's it's really not necessary to 
go down into violence mm -hmm. to resolve matters. I, you know, I, one of the things I would say when I respond to a domestic call is, was this the way you acted when you got together? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't the way you acted when you got together, then you need to figure out where things started going off the rails mm -hmm. and try to resolve it more peaceably because there's nothing that you can accomplish yelling and uh, and escalating at one another that you can't accomplish being calm with one another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I know. I mean, I don't like to tell, talk too much about myself, <laughs> but in my younger years, you know, I, I experienced some of that stuff. And like I said, I'm not going to go too much into it, but I'm pretty sure somebody, everybody has uh, come across a known of a situation where mm -hmm. somebody is dealing with domestic violence. How about mm -hmm. you, Anita? Would I've, you agree? I I personally have been I've dealt with it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to phrase the words so that because um, it is near and dear to my heart, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I've witnessed it with family members. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a it's it's a double edged sword because. The abuser is also a victim because exactly. usually, you know, we we just look at one side. Um, mm -hmm. Hurt people do hurt people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, again, there's not enough mental health, enough conflict resolution, especially in our community. And I'm, you know, I'm kind of single because I don't know about other communities, but in the black community, mm -hmm. um, you know, that going to the church to try to, to solve your problems is not helping. Right. Um, nothing against that, mm -hmm. but there is not enough ways of, I, I, I think, to teach, especially our young people, um, conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times when we have, we, our backs are against the wall with the world mm -hmm. and there's triggers and there's outlets, you, we don't know what you'll do when certain things come up, when everything is coming down on you. Mm -hmm. yeah. OK, so mm -hmm. and then for the the victim, the reasons of staying, the reasons of trying to make it work. Oh, as for a woman as I am, don't know about men, but it, I guess it can go both <laughs> ways. It does. It does. It can mean financially. You mm -hmm. know, what am I going to do with mm -hmm. my and it may not be just you. It mm -hmm. may be your children involved, maybe parents. It, it could be a whole host of different things. Um. I've had a person to pass because of it. Mm -hmm. They didn't say a word. You would thought they were the model um, couple mm -hmm. and got a call and the police came to my house and I did not know. And I was considered a best friend. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's mm -hmm. how deep that was. Mm -hmm. Knew all their family and on both sides. Uh -huh. And they asking me, how was their relationship? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. What you mean? And we just saw this woman in the morgue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and to know someone deeply and the next thing they're not here because of a conflict that they may have had early in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, it puts things in perspective. It does. Um, things can change so dry. I don't think that people set out to, at least I, in my mind, I would think they don't set out to do this. <laughs> right. But things but can they go. They also don't guard against. They it don't well. guard against it. And yeah. once you do it, once you hit one person one time, you can do it again. You know what? It's interesting that you brought up um, why people are in this. And you went to religion, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> that was that was one of the uh, mm -hmm. factors I had down there. Religion. Uh, if you are, let me go back to a friend um, that mentioned once, and he's a minister. Mm -hmm. He told me he never forget the day that he was in church. And there was this lady, I think I shared this story one time before on the air. Mm -hmm. There was this lady in the church and she kept asking the church to pray for her. Pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. And it was a situation at home where she was dealing with domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the church was like, no, we're not praying for you anymore. And you need to go back to your husband, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, he murdered her. Mm -hmm. So, and I mean, so, so, what do you say after that? What do you do after that? Well, you that? know, in the I mean, age you know? of in the age of information, mm -hmm. a lot of times we are now the most disconnected people at at all times. Well, we don't know our it, neighbors. It's selective. We're looking for confirmation bias with the information rather than looking for objective perspective. Yeah, that's yeah. true. 
And then there's the point where you said, you know, um, you think you know. In the Alicia Watts case, uh, there was a lot of people coming at her cousin because supposedly her cousin introduced her uh, mm. to Mr. Dunmore or mm. James Dunmore, I would say. And uh, But I'm like, did the cousin really know? How many times you've lived next to your neighbor and you didn't know that this was going on at their home? Yeah, that that was going. You, you, don't. Don't. Yeah. you don't. You don't. You don't. You have not a you know. clue. Like I said, uh-huh. I had a friend to pass and... I mean, when, when the police came knocking at the door, I had no, no clue, clue what they was talking right. about. I mean, they even gave each other sweet names, you know. <laughs> we went out as families, and we did things separately, and never said it. Never never once mm-hmm. even thought of that that could happen. Right. When you're first meeting somebody, especially if there's a potential for a relationship, presumably you're always putting your best foot forward. Mm-hmm. It's not like uh-huh. you're going to come right out the gate and say, well, you know, uh, I'll be, I'll I'm probably going to wind up putting my hands on you. <laughs> yeah, so right. I'm just giving you know all the information uh-huh. you need to make an informed choice. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. It, it typically doesn't work out that way. Uh-huh. They are going to always present. And it's not to say that they don't truly in their mind say, I don't want to be this person. Right. But as Anita mentioned earlier, hurt people hurt people. Mm-hmm. And trying to find help, as we spoke about a minute ago, to deal with emotional trauma i'm not even sure okay well you've heard what is it, the terminology uh practicing medicine mm-hmm. or treating illness with uh medication or whatnot mm-hmm. some people would argue that treatment uh there's no financial benefit and cure unfortunately in mental health i don't know that there is a such thing as cure because it's usually dealt with either with uh, behavior modifying medication or counseling, both of those scenarios require the individual to agree Mm -hmm. to them because they're not associating the mental illness as being Uh life-threatening. It usually becomes life-threatening as a form of behavior rather than uh, if you've got a physical ailment and if you don't get chemotherapy, then the cancer will kill you or whatever the case may Mm -hmm. be. Uh So it becomes much more of a choice. And if you're taking medication... For a lot of a lot of folks, it's one of those situations where the cure is worse than the ailment, because that behavior, if it's behavior modifying medication, what it can do to your body, mm-hmm. and you you all you gotta do is watch the commercials. It says it can cause this, it can uh-huh. cause you to go into right. depression if you feel this way, if you feel that way. You're relying on people who've already demonstrated that they're struggling to make good choices mm-hmm. for whatever reason with their mental illness. You're relying on them to make more choices. Do and, you go ahead, Anita? And I, I mean, mm-hmm. and and everybody has that that point. I, I think everybody does. It's just that some people never reach that point. Some people know how to manage that point. Everybody mm-hmm. has highs and lows. Mm-hmm. And when you find, if you can find a way to just kind of walk away from those volatile situations, that's what you need to do. But a lot of times, that fight or flight, they want to fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. And it, it is a behavioral modification. And a lot of people don't want to own that they even have a problem. That's number one. Right, and nobody right, want right. to feel deficient in anything. Um, or even say that I have these feelings. I don't know how to adjust. I don't know why I'm feeling this way. Because we're so private. Nobody wants to talk about anything. Um, victims and and the people that they victimize. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, it, it's... Like I said, it's a double-edged sword, and it, and it's a it's a, going to be an ongoing thing until people actually start to talk and talk, have these conversations. Mm-hmm. And like you mentioned mm-hmm. about, um, people are so reserved about mentioning about that. On the one hand, you hear all of this advocacy out there. If you need help, you call this mm-hmm. number, you call that number. But then you're transparent about your issues, and then mm-hmm. it becomes a stigma to get. Mm-hmm. Uh, other places in life right because folks are saying well if this person is unstable in this way can we afford to put them into this environment to do Mm xyz it can come even come down to even job opportunities or Mm -hmm. anything because you have this sitting out there and you know being judged and even though you feel this way and and maybe you need perspective maybe you need a break maybe you just need to you may be just mentally exhausted Mm mm-hmm but if you're still living in this 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 wind up 
don't get no rest, mind racing and can't sleep and all this kind of stuff. Um, you have to reach out for help because it's, it's no good for that. You know, you, you your body is going to take on all of that and that'll bring on disease too. Mm-hmm. Now let's define what domestic violence is because someone may not know exactly <laughs> what it is. Mm-hmm. All right. It's also known as domestic abuse mm-hmm. or intimate partner violence. Correct. Mm-hmm. All right. And this can be defined as a pattern of behavior in any relationship that is used to gain or maintain power over, excuse me, power or control over an intimate partner. It doesn't necessarily have to be an intimate partner. According to North Carolina general statutes under Uh uh, 50B, Uh which are all the guidelines associated with domestic violence, Mm -hmm. uh, it defines what qualifies as a, close personal relationship okay mm-hmm. so you don't necessarily have to be romantically mm-hmm. or intimately involved it can be between uh father uh parent and children mm-hmm. it can be between uh siblings mm-hmm. it can be between you and your roommate if you all share a room or an apartment because mm-hmm. you are domestic domesticated in the same environment mm-hmm. Um, granted, when you mention domestic violence, most people associate it as an intimate relationship. More often than not, they associate it with the man being uh, the offender and mm-hmm. the woman being the victim. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it has really taken on a whole different form when it comes to the investigative part because uh, we spent a lot of time where the laws did not favor a woman who was in an abusive situation and finally the laws and the lobbying and the advocacy changed. Now the laws are in place, but unfortunately there's room for those laws to actually be abused Mm -hmm. and allegations to be made that aren't necessarily true on their face. And I can assure you that if you are a man and you've ever faced an allegation of domestic violence or sexual assault, in a lot of instances, particularly in the court of public opinion, it's a guilty until proven innocent type situation. Mm-hmm. According to the CDC, one in four women and one in seven men will experience physical violence by the intimate partner mm-hmm. at some point. That information that I gave earlier, and I'm glad you corrected me on that, though, but I pulled that off the Internet, mm-hmm. uh, the information I gave oh, yeah. earlier about. Absolutely. Yeah, but I'm glad you brought up the 50B mm-hmm. as well and what that could really be. Um, OK, so according I said that earlier. According to the CDC, one in four women and one in seven men will experience physical violence by their intimate partner at some point during their lifetimes. About one in three women and nearly one in six men experience some form of sexual violence during their lifetimes. That's something I saw when I was researching this. Mm -hmm. Uh, Four types of violence. There's physical violence, sexual violence, psychological violence, and neglect. Mm -hmm. Women ages 18 through 24 and ages 25 through 34 generally experience the highest rates of intimate partner violence. Just some uh, statistics there for you. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's like you said, it's rare that you hear a man, you don't see men going into the courthouse saying, Hey, I've been Correct. abused. Mm-hmm. Correct. It's mainly women but and that, women. But are it looked, does happen. It happens. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And women are look, like, looked as the weaker vessel and you mm-hmm. know, we shouldn't hit women, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, but again, I mean, should the man take abuse from a woman who hits what, again, Constantly. you know, generally speaking, men are usually stronger than women. Mm-hmm. And again, if you can find a way to walk away on both parts, that's mm-hmm. what you need to do. You mm-hmm. need to find an escape route because especially when you have people depending on you like tr- children mm-hmm. or aging parents, um, y- you can't afford not to be there. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the the arguments are not worth even even the thought of even hitting someone uh-huh. or, or getting to a point where you got your hands around someone's neck, you know. Uh-huh. Um, but that, again, it, it comes with being, I guess, groomed to have conflict resolution. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, those These conversations need to start with our young ladies and our young men. Yeah. But in order to have conversations, you have to play the part, too. You mm-hmm. can't be in relationships that are abusive and then tell your boys not to hit. Right. Yeah. 
or right. you tell your girls not to hit, you uh-huh. know? So you have to, you know, live in that truth. And, you know, again, when these things do come up, we have to own it. You know, I did this and, you know, and I think generally speaking, most people are sorry, but the consequences are so great once they go across that line. Uh-huh. Yeah. I've seen people get into fights and, mm-hmm. and these are couples, you know, and then they patch it up, mm-hmm. they work it out. Mm-hmm. And then I've seen others just go through the abuse years mm-hmm. and years and years, and then they finally get tired of it. Well, there's so many mm-hmm. other components to it as well. You mm-hmm. think about, uh, and once again, just kind of drawing on my experience in law enforcement, um, how many people live in apartments cohabitating, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, if you have an apartment, that means you probably got a shared wall with a neighbor. Mm-hmm. They hear loud noises and they hear uh, what they interpret as being an escalating volatile situation. Mm-hmm. Well, naturally, what are they going to do? They're going to call 911. Mm-hmm. And then someone from the police department shows up at your door Mm -hmm. when all you're doing is having an argument with someone. And especially, once again, another social challenge that we're dealing with, you already have or feel the type of way about Mm -hmm. anything with law enforcement. That's only going to further, just your presence is going to further aggravate the situation. Mm -hmm. And you get in there and you want to be able to put eyes on everybody, make sure no one's been injured, make sure that you talk to everyone individually because sometimes they won't speak up because the other party that uh, is the aggressor, Mm -hmm. they're scared that you're not going to be able to take them away and then they have to deal with the retaliation. It is such a delicate process uh, from an investigative side and a management side and even living in such close proximity if you live in an apartment building. Uh, when to call, when not to call. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's right. And another thing, a lot of times people just want to be heard. But I know the control thing, but a lot of times when you when you hear people and how they operate, you have to believe who they are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if they can't handle certain stressors and stuff and you trying to plead with them and the next thing you know y'all locked up <laughs> i mean that's not that's not the relationship for you right <laughs> you know um i think everybody has their like i said everybody has their moments you know but we have our highs and lows and if you can't even get a you know a breather or you go your separate ways and then come back and work it out then, I mean, you do have to think. Well, I don't even think counseling at that point, to me, if you got to go through all of that, is even worth it, you mm-hmm. know, right. because you've already tested the waters. And at some point, something is going to be tremendous that will happen in one person's mind. And here we go, you mm-hmm. know. So, I, I mean, it's unfortunate. Um, but we have to, at some point, these conversations have to be talked to our children early and what the signs are and what to do and be be supportive as a family member or a friend mm-hmm. you know the yeah. trust got to be there what the signs are that's mm. that's mm. going back to alicia's case her friends were noted publicly as saying they they tried they they saw red flags in the gentleman that she was dating and her quote uh, her sister quoted this at her funeral um that um be happy for me. That was her response to her friends who, mm-hmm. who were concerned about this man that she was dating. Just be happy for me. But I, I'm, I'm like, we need to teach mm-hmm. that if, if it's, it's, if he is doing this, you, you might not want to stay in this. You might want to <laughs> think again. Yeah. But again, we have, because we stay in yeah. it for certain reasons and stuff. Like if you talking about just be happy for me, more than likely, I don't want to be alone. That's what I'm hearing. Right. So yeah. it's a love. Yeah. It's, it's really it's not, a love. It's not even love. It's, 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 it's about for companionship. Well, and no. it was a relatively new uh, relationship too, wasn't it? Yes. So it was a situation where it's like, well, you know, I'm giving it a chance. You know, work with me. I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing. I can imagine what her response was. You know, I'm giving it a chance. Then, you know, trust my judgment. You know me, trust my judgment. But I think, again, I think it's about love. And when I say love, uh, pe- people want to be in relate. They want to be in love. Yeah, sure. You know what I'm saying? We're, so we're you, human. you, yeah, they want to be in love. It's not so natural you, to be alone. It's and not. It, right. I mean, we can say that. I mean, uh-huh. and in speaking for black women and for us, mostly, I think, and I say this to my friends all the time, we're the only 
known group that we got to be strong and independent. But you do want a, a relationship. You want a partner. You want people to help raise your children. You want to be able to go on vacation and do, you know, family things and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's for everyone. And then when you, when finally you're working with the world, when you may not be the actual poster child of uh, fine or, you know, you're not the right weight or you got too much education or you have too much stuff or, and you just want to be known as a person. And then you come up and then these, I guess I'm, I'm calling frogs. See, frogs <laughs> come up and you got to kiss one to turn into a prince. <laughs> As what, ha I, what happens if that's in reverse right, and if the right. man hey, hey, come up with it? Hey, what, hey, what, well, it could go either she, way. She ain't a frog, so what yeah, would yeah, she be? Is she not a frog, but whatever <laughs> it is, you trying to make it, you know, you trying to get that forever person, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. and you got to go through some, and then as you get older, you know, the pig is starting to get slimmer and slimmer, you know, <laughs> so now you're trying to make do, and, and then what I tell ladies is don't settle. Uh -huh. You know, you have to be true to yourself. And, I, and, you know, Pauline, when I went on truck drive, it gave me a chance to know me, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and am I ready for a relationship? I came with baggage. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. you just all this different stuff. You but, live life, all of us going to have baggage. Right, exactly. <laughs> you, if you over 50, you had some stuff go through, you know. Uh -huh. But you have to get right with yourself. Right. And you have to know your worth. That's right. And like, again, you know, in order to do that, you have to set standards for yourself. Now, Reginald and I, we, we don't really argue, but we can discuss and we can agree to disagree. I put it that way. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we know we both have lived and we can live separate if it has to come to that. And I hope we never will. But I mean, I can't imagine us going back to back and toe to toe and stuff, you know, uh -huh. over what? What mm -hmm. exactly can happen at 50 that we got to get to that point? I, and it could. I don't know. But well, whatever I hope it not. is, but I can't I, imagine. Let me tell you this. I hope not. I uh, hope not. You know. But, I, I, I'm, and, but you know, I, I've been through some some, <laughs> some foolishness. But, and you know, you just you, you look at it for what it is. And then you say, well, why am I taking this? You know? Well, I, I'm surprised at the stories of people that have been married 30, 40 years. And then they decide they want to be divorced. Mm. I, I haven't heard very many stories like that, but I have. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Chat City with P. Ross on Oak 93.5 FM WRLY, Raleigh, North Carolina. In the building with me today is co-host Mr. Will Quick and our very special guest, excuse me, our very special guest, Miss Anita Hayes. Mm. All right, we're discussing domestic violence. If you're just tuning in, we've said a lot. We've touched a little bit on the Alicia Watts case and we're looking at um, just different components to domestic violence. Here's a question. What makes people violent? Anita touched on it earlier a little bit some of the points that i had down here and one she said is like being a victim yourself mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons why when i looked it up that's that was the very first reason that i saw curses generational, generational that, curses i mean if you seen your mama go through it mm -hmm. and she took it and she said well you know baby he got he keeps the bills going mm -hmm. you no. know food on the table you yeah. know yeah Hey, that was but it. even the, as an extension of that, uh -huh. let's just look at our everyday society. Yeah. A great deal of our disagreements or conflicts seem to always wind up getting resolved in some level of violence or the threat of violence. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. let's say, for instance, um, the discussion about the effectiveness of corporal punishment. Now, I would be willing to bet that the three of us in this room, <laughs> coming from the generation that we came from, probably know a little something about, you know, catching the switch, catching the belt, yes, something like yes, that. Yes. Yeah, or some variation. Whipped in a uh -huh. or early. Right. Mm -hmm. You're right. right. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. So <laughs> again, um, mm -hmm. going back to my experience in law enforcement and you hear people always talking about, well, I don't know what's wrong with these kids. They are. I know what's wrong. They need, they tow up. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, well, yeah, <laughs> I see where that was once upon a time effective. But the question you got to ask yourself now is, is the lesson that's going forward, okay, I did wrong, so I had to face physical punishment. Mm. Does that mean that if somebody wrongs me, I should be allowed to administer physical punchment to them. Mm, I never, never thought looked of at that. it that way. Because yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. a, a lot mm -hmm. of, if they associate wrongdoing with physical punishment, um, then oftentimes my belief is 
that's where they first learned to utilize violence as a form of solution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here's another point, and it's touching on everything that you guys are saying. A study concluded that children become aggressive through reservational learning. Mm -hmm. No, excuse me, observational mm -hmm. le mm -hmm. learning. Yes. And watching someone else do it. Mm -hmm. Other studies have concluded aggression isn't only learned, but inborn in one's mm -hmm. environment. Well, what I do think, you think about that? I do think it's observational. I, I mm -hmm. agree yeah. to that. I, I, and I do think of some level of environment like games that we play, and movies mm -hmm. that children watch, and uh, that, and the music that you hear. I don't know there if I can go. go with the inborn part because I don't know about that one. The either. reason why I say that is we're always saying that hate has to be taught. Mm -hmm. So if you're telling me that hate has to be taught and we all come out with the purest of hearts because you're the most pure in the world once you're very first born. After that, it starts going down here. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> when I look at inborn, I think it's something like they say, you're just born with. You can have two of the greatest parents in the world. They're the nicest people, but the child come out different, crazy <laughs> or mean. and mm -hmm. what You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I feel like now being that I'm a Christian, mm -hmm. uh, I feel like uh, that spirit, that evil spirit somehow is uh, oh. I, I want to say inborn into that child, but I don't know if that's just right. <laughs> I know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so talk it's like, uh, I mean, well, <laughs> no, I'm just looking at it. I'm like, how is it that some, I mean, some children, you know, I mean, yeah, they come I from mean, good parents. And, and, and then and the, I, that's, that's, again, that could be a chemical imbalance, mental health. I mean, all of that. Yeah, uh -huh. but I... But you normal. think about how much more quickly now children become exposed to things mm -hmm. that imprint on them. Uh -huh. Because as a parent now, first of all, if you got a two-parent household, you're the exception and not the rule. Mm -hmm. And even if you got a two-parent household, they're struggling to make time to be able to invest with their kids because if they're commuting, they're working, they got to keep the jobs, there becomes a greater disconnect with the children. Mm -hmm. So everything that they're getting from an influence and development standpoint not only are you not able to take time to counteract that, you don't have the time to uh, deprogram them mm -hmm. from what they've been programmed day in and day out. That's other kids their age and whatever hurts that they're dealing with and they imprint on them, uh, whatever the environment might be at their school or wherever else they might go. Mm -hmm. The amount of time as a parent that what I've seen that they're able to truly spend with their children seems to be dwindling. Yeah, because mm. yeah, of the age of everybody wanting the latest and the greatest. I mean, but it takes two people to do all of that. Yeah. When is enough enough to be able to raise your children effectively or, raise, you know, and be a family? Do you have to have two cars as a Mercedes? Mm -hmm. well, I mean, I'm just giving an analogy. Do you mm -hmm. have to live in a six or five or six thousand square foot house do you have to do it now you can have the salary i'm not knocking that but if it means that if your children and you know if your children are going to be productive and successful i would think me personally that you would want to have a nuclear family where okay the mom is nurturing this baby through to kindergarten they got to go to kindergarten if she chooses to have a career by all means, she can have one, but does it have to take away? Or if the man, it can be, you know, nowadays women can make just as much as men now. So I'm just looking at the old days. <laughs> Would it not be, and if if we can live on one salary to make sure that our children are taken care of? Because I put on the other side, when we believe our kids, kids to be raised by daycare mm -hmm. <laughs> and be after school programs mm -hmm. when they should be eating dinner and doing homework. Um... You know, that's a lot of the environment come from. You don't know. If you're not around your kids like that, and you say, I don't know where they get that from. They got it from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's no way that you can monitor your children if you always, everybody is at work. That's all right. That's all right. But unfortunately, we're in a time now. I mean, right. I'm saying the old ways, but we're talking right now. I mean, we don't it's, even hold our elderly to a, um, a degree of taking them and caring for them. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's, it's it, it doesn't have to be as hard as it is. And a lot of the, the 
the determining factors is how much stuff we gonna have. Yeah, right. yeah, the contentment piece. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, what? How much stuff is gonna make you happy? <laughs> now I know. I mean, there there are families out there. Like I said, I think they're doing all the right thing. They're married. You know, they planned their children and all this and all that. Um, you know, let's say they got a their family structure is just. It's a good one, mm -hmm. all right. You yeah. know, but then you still have that child or those children out of that family that go off on wayward. And I mean, somehow they they're violent, well, <laughs> or they again, become violent. The influence outside uh -huh. that family is uh -huh. still <laughs> always present. And then here's my thing, though. Um, okay, so say those that those children that come from a great background mm -hmm. decides, or some for whatever reason, they're violent, mm -hmm. and they get in trouble with the law. Mm -hmm. But the laws aren't to where they're keeping these people or holding them accountable by letting them go too the soon or, or clo closing an eye to what they have just done. Because let's look at the James Dunmore case again. This man had a history of abuse when we look back at his, you know, Correct. and I mean, was five years enough to detain him or hold him in jail? To correct that behavior and then let them go. But jail doesn't correct the behavior. It, okay. Jail doesn't correct it, and okay. financial um, uh, money doesn't do it either. So, uh -huh. what exactly do you want the law to do? Because that's what? the only two things. The rest of it is kind of human. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, it's like, do you can? How do you condemn them? Because the laws are only going to do one or two things: give you what restitution, or they're going to you know, put you in jail. Mm -hmm. Consequence. Consequence. That's then, your consequence. Right. I mean, it, it there's a gray area. How do you, how long would you keep a person that hadn't, he hadn't killed nobody that they know of yet other than right. this young lady. Mm -hmm. So how long, how long would you say that he would have to stay there? But he was, uh, uh, I don't know. And I mean, then, if, and it, and means, and if it means, if it means yeah. forever, I mean, no, I, I mean, I know I'm being well, a little, I'm exaggerating right. a little bit, but, well, I mean, but, but, but that's the emotional point because right, that's the in the situation piece. that you're in and being connected to that situation, that's the way you feel. Right. Uh -huh. But on the flip side, look at how much we've been talking about with social justice and racial inequality in the justice system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you turn around and flip that around and here it is, this gentleman who made these choices, did his debt to society, but he continues to be reminded about the past that he had if he's trying to move beyond it. Well, he had, he was just, uh, there was a restraining order or something. His wife had just put one out on him in right. May or March right. of this year. I'm so. just saying, for example. But, uh, yeah. this, this but, but even with that, I mean, okay, then you're going to get into the finance and what taxpayers have to pay for. Mm -hmm. Are you building more jails? Are you building, I mean. It, Why it, not if it's going to keep somebody alive? Well, like, uh, okay, you know? but then it comes still down to the, the finance part of it. See, again, it's almost not not putting it that it's less important or not important, but then you can have those gray cases where it may not have been what we thought it was. They may have gotten convicted, but then when they do an appeal, they find out maybe it was something different. Mm -hmm. It's a whole lot of different scenarios to that. Every component to the solution and the issues that we're talking about when you think you got a grasp on it, it's two more heads to that component right. that then got them shook loose. Mm -hmm. Because for every action, there's a equal and potentially reaction. equal and opposite reaction. Mm -hmm. Right. And I mean, and this is just a consequence. But I think in order to combat a lot of this, especially in our young young adults, mm -hmm. where you say this happens a lot too, the mm -hmm. conversations need to start at home. Mm -hmm. And in and not only the conversation, we have to walk the walk. Mm -hmm. Like what yeah. Will was saying, we was just joking earlier, and I was talking about getting a switch to him, you know. <laughs> and I mean, I had never thought of that, to be honest. And uh -huh. a lot of times, when you when you know better, you should do better, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And you know, and you're right. We do use a lot of that balancing. We even though it's not, it's playful. But it can when a young person see that, may it be somebody else's child that's walking by. You know, they see that and they think that, oh, well, that's what we're supposed to be but doing. Yeah, think I about in adult life, yeah. when we were talking about the manipulation or control, mm -hmm. you think about the job that you're in. Mm. And you know what the rules are. Most place has some sort of policy manual or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you can be left in fear. Especially if you have a job that requires certain judgments and call judgment calls and everything to be made, you can be left in fear because folks didn't like the outcome mm -hmm. or they didn't 
try to follow your understanding about how you arrived at the decision that you made. Right. And that's a measure of control as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, before, time is running out on us pretty fast. And mm. I want to get to our other subjects. But oh. look, <laughs> I just want to bring up some very important points that I think uh, uh, would be helpful when it comes to domestic violence. Uh, I just want to touch back on what I heard uh, actually a relative of mine said who who was following this case. Uh, he felt like he strongly felt like uh, maybe James's family had something to do, and James Dunmore, the the murderer, uh, had something to do with the outcome with all these ladies he was involved with and decided to hurt. Um, they put a just slap on the wrist when he was young or something and, and said, oh, baby, you know, don't do that again. They didn't really uh, discipline him mm-hmm. like he felt like they should have. But again, we don't know. It's the, speculation. But, right. But what yeah. is that discipline? I mean, you know, mm-hmm. so it, it and then too, we, we have to come together as a village. Yeah. I mean, right. sometimes, you know, the men of the family need to come to these young men and say, hey, but it's not enough of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, I. We, it's just not enough of them that will stand up and say, hey, we're now more afraid of our own children, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just think it does it needs to start with home. If you are a victim of domestic violence, or if you are experiencing domestic violence, you do not have to stay in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, get help. Here's a helpline number, 1-800-799-7233. Do not be afraid to pick up the phone and call. If you feel like there's going to be some backlash or you're going to be in danger, mm-hmm. uh, please seek your nearest police department. Um, uh, get supportive friends, people that are going to really, truly help you mm-hmm. or family members to help you get out of this thing. But call the experts at one 800 799 72 Three, three. You do not have to stay in that situation. You are listening to Chat City with P. Ross on Oak 93.5 FM. I have the lovely Miss Anita Hayes, mm-hmm. soon to be married. <laughs> She's engaged right now. We're going to talk a little bit about her preparations for marriage. And we have co-host Will Quick in the, in the building with us today. Uh, Anita, congratulations, young lady. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh-huh. And let me ask you this. Hmm. What does it feel like? Being engaged, I, I, it's, it's been amazing. I've never felt like this by anybody. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, he's a wonderful guy. He uh-huh. really is. Um, he's he's everything. He provides. He pr- protects, and he profess. And I couldn't ask for a better partner. Um, we have a good time together. Um, the mo the thing that I really enjoy the most is that we can talk, even if we do kind of disagree. Uh-huh. Um. I've never had that kind of support where, hey, what do you need? How can I help you? Mm-hmm. You know, um, and it's just awesome. It's an awesome feeling. I I, I waited this long because I am 54, too. <laughs> 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 and it can happen. And like I said, he's everything that I'm not. All so, right. <laughs> um, you know, I think we kind of balance each other out because I am we're very opposite. Uh-huh. And we can appreciate that. At least I hope so. Anyway. What but, was the proposal like? Oh. <gasps> great <laughs> <laughs> well it was it was bad not bad but it was in a bad situation i was having one of my dearest friends was transition transitioning she had a stroke mm. um and he was i guess trying to figure out how he was going to propose but i wasn't staying in place and i wasn't thinking about anything because i kept running up to the hospital and you know and it's around new year's and he said, well, what do you want to do? You want to go out? I'm like, no, I'm not in the mood for that. <laughs> and he's like, well, let's go to church. Sure, let's go to church. Why? We all go to church. Like, that's all <laughs> I counsel. That's our comfort, right? So we went to a church that we didn't even belong to, Pauline. Okay. <laughs> and we uh-huh. was up there, and they was having a great service. Uh-huh. It was awesome. Very world, I think it's World Victory. Uh-huh. And I actually, I saw my roommate in the choir stand, LaShawn Connor, and she was singing and everybody was <laughs> up and, you know, just praising the Lord. It was great. And so when, you know, I come from uh, Seven Day Adventist and Methodist faith and, you know, we, they don't shout, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> so, you know, and so uh, Reginald stood up and I thought he was getting in with the word. So I slid over a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Give <him> some room. 
Then one week. Yeah, I just give you room, you know. I'm like, yeah, you know. <laughs> And when the, 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 the mental picture here. Yes, yes. And so when the the clock struck twelve, he said, Will you marry me? And I was like, and I've never been a lost a boy person lost for words. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and the lady said, if you don't say anything, I will. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. oh. <laughs> okay, real quickly, Anita. So tell us who decides. How did you guys come together to say, hey, we're going to get married this way? Oh, well, the first thing was, this was January. He's like, oh, yeah, we can get married April. What? And now I'm <laughs> overwhelmed. I'm like, excited. <laughs> you know, I wasn't sure how this was going to play out, work. I, I, you know, we just, and, you know, I like to travel. I like to go. And he had said he had never used his passport. <laughs> well, if we need to get that, but let's put a stamp in that. <laughs> you know? So we, and, you know, we was talking about different places and, um, then we like we want the boys to go, and you know which one is the economical. And we found that Los Cabos fit our needs, uh-huh. so um, that's where we decided. Then, as far as the date was, it was talking about what, what was going on, how long it would take, if anybody else wanted to go, you know. Uh-huh. So we picked October. So, okay. Yeah. So in no problems in in agreeing um, with the other others choices like i want to do it this way or i want the colors to be this way or no. anything like that fact, i don't have okay. any colors I mean, okay. I, <laughs> you know and it was like whatever you would like you know i, I try not to be that person but uh-huh. you know i i do like black and so but you know we 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 came to an agreement on the colors and stuff and uh-huh. like i said my village came and when i said i do everybody said yes we going to <laughs> so I, i'm just i'm just ecstatic i am i'm so ready i'm i you know i don't know how prepared but as far as like you know but yeah I, i'm i'm very excited all right do you have a wedding planner no no okay mm-hmm. so you're doing it together you, you yeah, we do whatever we do okay. well you know the, the the resort does most of the stuff uh-huh. <laughs> so we don't have to do anything destination wedding is cool right like yeah that. that was one of the great things uh-huh. you know but as far as like you know getting the you know the wedding attire and the, the boys together the ladies together and uh-huh. you know just trying to find out what's what and you know that's that's it i mean really you know, we just go and have a good time, a big old party. Uh huh. That sounds up. so <laughs> great and delightful. I wish I could be there, but I can't. And uh-huh. thank you for the invitation. I appreciate You're it. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Um, just a little tidbit here. You may know these things, but this is for anybody else who's planning to get married. Uh, four golden rules to marriage. Mm. One, don't lie. Mm. Two, keep your promises. Mm. Three, argue productively and four always play nice that's right all right one of the other things we wanted to talk about real quickly because again this time is running away from us more than i wanted to friendships how to maintain a long lasting friendship as i said earlier at the top of the show anita and will have been friends for a long time i have a mutual friend we have a mutual friend that introduced me to their little circle here it is will is my co-host now i got invited to anita's wedding i mean i'm just loving this i mean and so many friends you see a lot of good friendships and then you see friendships that end sadly Mm -hmm. you know tell me what it is about you two that keep you friends and tell me a little bit real quickly about how you guys met and oh well i'm gonna start off with this my Mm -hmm. great grandmother who Mm -hmm. passed away in 1979 Uh pearl johnson and she said if you can get through your life with one or two people through your whole entire your your life that counts Uh uh-huh you done remarkably well Uh uh-huh I met Will, I think, when the, we was in elementary school. Elementary school. Merrick Moore. Moore. <laughs> Merrick Moore uh-huh. Elementary. And on Cheek Road in Durham, North Carolina. Yep. And me and his niece at the time, we were we were good friends when we got to junior high school. But I met him in elementary school. Uh-huh. And we we just we just clicked. We only a day apart. Uh-huh. I'm I'm born on January 10th. He born on January 11th. You know, How do you two I don't do even that? think it's a full day to be honest. Because I think you know I'm what, born in that. Afternoon. No matter what. It don't matter. I'm still the oldest. You know, but yeah, but I, I don't know. We just we've just been friends forever. I mean, almost to the point. Well, I was taller than him at one point. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know. So what you think, Will? It's uh. It's been an interesting journey because, you know, people think about friends, they think about folks that have been inseparable. 
we have had occasions where we've kind of lost contact with one another, but the minute that we see one another, we fall right back in sync. And I can't ever think of a time that seeing her face did not just make my heart burst with happiness. Um, and it was just always a joy to be with her. I, I, I smile every opportunity I get to hang out with her and now with Reggie as well, because much like she was saying, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. I, 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 there's not enough time to really go into all of that, but he's a great guy, and I'm very, very happy that he is making my dear friend happy in matrimony. Uh-huh. Awesome. Um, there tends to be jealousy in friendships sometimes. You know, I, I remember me being jealous of one of my friends mm-hmm. um, when I introduced her to one of my church friends, mm-hmm. and then they hit it off, and they end up being colleagues at the same college and all that. I'm like they just left me in the wind they just hitting it off really good but then i had to come to my senses and say oh man i'm just being i'm the being the silly one i'm just glad that you know the, the the two had met what do you do to keep jealousy out of friendships well the thing is i me personally uh-huh. you know when regardless who whomever anybody can attest to this anybody that i meet i always bring them in my circle i don't yeah. care uh-huh. <laughs> if they get out it's because they there's a choice <laughs> that they made uh-huh. you know because I, I i feel like i love everybody yeah. you know i've always been that person you and know that's the interesting part we're, we're both cut from the same cloth yeah. that way we ain't never met strangers uh-huh. so uh-huh. it's just people with friends and family that we just yet to meet uh-huh. uh now it's funny um We've never had a jealousy, but if there was ever a time that we had a disagreement, it was probably over space, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, now we're enemies. We're foes at this point. Yeah, we, yeah. He's yeah. going to be on my team, or we just going to be enemies. No, nah, I'm either on her team or I'm a spectator. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, boy, if, if, if the space game was a shark, then this one right here, great white. <laughs> Now, how did you two end up at A and T together? Did one of you influence the other, or you just both of you just chose those colleges? We at just, different I times? just chose yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. I'm... She actually came out of high school a year before I did. I liked okay. fifth grade so much I did it twice. <laughs> so, that, uh, <laughs> so that put me a year behind. Otherwise, we'd have been in the same class. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And once again, it was one of those situations. Uh, being a year behind in high school graduation, uh, we reconnected when we got to when I got to Greensboro, and. Uh, We've been pretty much virtually, I'd say yeah. since then, we've been virtually inseparable. Ever yeah, since. you went and took my car. You remember you took my Central and get the radio put in? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 Wow. Well, again, it's been a pleasure so mm-hmm. far being your friend. Yeah. <laughs> and a shout out to our mutual friend, Sharonda. Thank you for introducing me to Anita and Will. Uh, we got to get Sharonda on this show, guys. Yeah, and we, you know, we got to definitely do this again. We're at the end of the show, the top of the show, the top of the hour. Uh, thank you again for coming, Anita. Well, we're going to see you later again in the show, later on. And I just want to encourage you to have a fantastic, make it a fantastic. Oh, can I do a shout out right quick? Sure. Central go lose. <laughs> <laughs> Aggie Eagle Classic is going to be boy. going down on Saturday. <laughs> All right. Aggie okay. fight. Nationwide. I need a ram to help me in, the, in here. <laughs> Everybody, I love you. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the week. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.